sideline represents yeah. the, the average, average position. Yeah, average position, yeah. And when somebody has a neurologic disease, like Lou Gehrig's disease, where they start to have motor problems, then it's the job of the speech language pathologist to advise them on what kind of treatments they should get, help the team figure out what the diagnosis is going to be for the individual, which is often a very protracted process. ALS is also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, and it's a disease that's uh, uh, what's known as a neurodegenerative disease, that is it progresses over time. It primarily affects uh, the motor neurons, which are the ones that connect to the muscles and allow us to move. There is no biomarker to detect ALS. What that means is that you can't check blood, you can't do brain imaging and say somebody has ALS. Currently, it takes up to 12 to 18 months to get a diagnosis often. And the very unfortunate thing about that is a person can be losing up to 18, 20, 30 percent of their motor neurons during that time. Ideally, we'd want to identify them early in the disease process. So we're leveraging sensor technology that has been developed primarily in Hollywood to do animations. And it's perfectly suited for that because we can look at the small movements of the face, which are on the order of millimeters. Each camera sees a marker, and it's a two-dimensional image. We have multiple cameras. That image then is combined across cameras, fed into a computer, and then we can reconstruct a three-dimensional image based on those individual cameras. At the same time, we can also record muscle activation patterns, and those are the patterns of muscle contractions that are occurring underneath the skin that are actually producing the movement. So it gets us a little bit closer to the nervous system. Dr. Green's ability to use motion capture to look at the movements of these very small muscles is critically important. He's giving us new tools to understand a region that's been traditionally very difficult for us to follow progression of the disease in. Not only are we leveraging this sensor technology to get these measurements, but we're also using machine learning algorithms then to assess the data. And that's important because with these new sensors, we get a lot more data still theoretical who say that if you oversample that you will capture more of the details of the wave. I hope to translate this work directly to clinical practice. That's my goal. And the faster I can do it, the better. To have some objective information that will help us make a plan, will help us understand how the patient is going to progress so that we can hopefully keep a step ahead of the disease. That's critical data that we just do not have now. The IHP is an ideal research setting for this environment. We have collaborators at Harvard, we have collaborators at MIT, we have a lot of support within the Institute for Research, and we have all the tools to do the work. So we, we have what we need, we have the support, now we're ready to run.